All right, let's just do some more complicated examples so we can make sure we can kind of deal with these laws of exponents. Um, the first thing I see in this particular example, I see negative exponents all over the place. So those are the first things I want to deal with. Um, I'm going to deal with the fact that I have a negative exponent on a fraction first. So I'm going to take the reciprocal of everything, just take everything that was on the bottom, write it on the top, and vice versa. Raised to the positive 2. Um, next up, I'm going to deal with the fact that I have negative exponents here and here. So that will be end up being 10a, let's see, the 25b. Those are the things that are staying put. The 10a, the 25b, those stay put. Um, this b to the negative 1 moves down to the bottom to become a b to the positive 1. This a to the negative 2 moves up to the top to become a to the positive 2. And then we still have, of course, parentheses and the squared on the outside. So you can see I'm kind of, uh, it's not a good idea to try to do all of these laws of exponents in the same step. It can get overly confusing. I'm trying to figure out, kind of focus on one idea at a time. I first dealt with a negative exponent on the fraction. Then I'm dealing with the negative exponents on the individual factors. Now, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with the fact that I have a times a squared and b times b, because um, I can kind of clean those up a little bit. So this will be 10a squared. And on the bottom, we have 25, oops, that should be 10a cubed, because a times a squared, um, 25b squared. All right, so next up, uh, the last thing, well, getting toward the end here, um, I have a, a, a bunch of things in parentheses raised to a power here. So that means I'm going to take this 2 and distribute it to each of the various factors on the inside. 10 squared is 100. A cubed squared is a to the 6, that's 3 times 2. Um, 25 squared is, um, I think I need to pull up my calculator. Six hundred twenty-five. Oh, I should have known that. Um, and b squared squared is b to the fourth. That's two times two again. Um, and at this point now, it looks like the only things that I might be able to do. Actually, I probably could have canceled. I just realized I could have reduced my fraction on the inside um, right there. I could have canceled the factor of five, but oh well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cancel a factor of twenty-five now, leaving four a. Uh, to the sixth over 25b to the fourth. And that will be my final answer. You can see I've reduced as much as I can. I don't have a's occurring multiple times in this product slash quotient. I don't have any parentheses, so that's how I know that I'm done. All right, looking at this one, um, there are three different things that are all multiplied by each other, and I'm going to look at each of them individually first. Uh, this first one, we have a negative exponent, so I'm going to deal with the fact and deal with that. Um, actually, I don't know. I could say that this is uh, this stuff, or 1 over this stuff to the negative 3, but actually I'm kind of liking the idea of just doing 4 times 3 here. So the opposite of a... Oh no, no, I don't want to do that. Because this is not the opposite of a to the 4th. This is, or this is not negative a to the 4th. This is the opposite of a to the 4th. So I think I actually am just going to do what I was originally saying. Um, we have 1 over the opposite of a to the 4th cubed. All right, um, here we have a negative exponent on the b, which means this is going to be a over b cubed. And then on this one, well, it's all raised to the power of 0, so that whole thing goes to 1. So actually, there's nothing to really do there. I'm multiplying by 1. Um, let's see. Now... With this mess right here, we have the opposite of a cubed raised to the third power. Um, this is essentially having negative one, or you know, three copies of the negative, and then, you know, this is negative one. I'm going to distribute my three through there. Um, we have a negative three times, so that's going to end up being a negative, and then we have a to the fourth three times, so that's a to the twelfth. And it looks like the last things I can do, if I push these two fractions together, a over a to the 12th, I can do some, I can use my um, law of exponents. 1 minus 12 is negative 11. Rather than writing it as negative 11, though, I'm actually going to just say a to the 11th on the bottom part of the fraction. Um, so what I'm doing here, a over a to the 12th, 
is a to the negative 11th, because this is, like I said, 1 minus 11 is negative 11, except really that's just a to the 11th on the bottom. Um, you can you can kind of hopefully see how you can get from here to there without taking this intermediate step, because I'm just canceling one of the a's from there and canceling one of the a's from there, so I have 11 left. Um, that's ultimately, you know, that's kind of the way that I like to think about that. The last thing that I haven't yet taken into account is the fact that I have a negative. I'm actually going to put that up top. Um, because it doesn't really matter where the negative occurs in the fraction, I could have had it out in front of the, this uh, fraction as well. All right, on this one, um, I do have a negative exponent right here, uh, but there's too much going on right there. I don't want to have a fraction inside my parentheses, so I actually am going to hold off on dealing with that negative exponent until I distribute this 3 through there. So the top, uh, I'll just copy down. There's nothing to do there. Uh, in, in the bottom part here, 2 cubed is 8 x to the negative 1 cubed, well, negative 1 times 3 is x to the negative 3, and y cubed looks like that. So what I've done here is I've taken distributed that 3 through the parentheses. Next up, I'll cancel a factor of 2, uh, giving me 3 up top and a 4 down below. And I'm going to deal with the fact that I have a negative exponent here. Let's go x, x to the 4th. And my y's, well, I have y cubed and y cubed. Those are going to cancel each other out. So actually, I don't need to write anything for those. Um, so I get 3x to the 5th over 4. Or actually, probably, I might prefer to write this as 3 fourths x to the 5th. Um, it doesn't matter which way you write these. Um, this way, this actually is a monomial, so I might be tempted to write it like this so that I have a coefficient in x to the 5th there. Um, but I'm not really seeing, I don't know, either of these would be perfectly sufficient. I'm going to go ahead and circle that one.